Yes, hi there, Victor Pross speaking to you. How you doing? Anyway, today, or tonight, as you can see, <laughs> I just felt like going for a little uh, midnight walk here to talk to you. But anyway, uh, I'm feeling at the moment to, t to discuss a certain issue. That being um, the global awakening the global awakening to statism it definitely is a feeling in the air that the whole idea of government seems to be a pretty rotten idea <laughs> to say the least and that the ruling class are not after all these benevolent divinely inspired angelic species, these demigods that, uh, that we've tend to uh, allot to them, this, this kind of status that they're uh, specially appointed people that uh, seem to know what they're doing, they uh, are af looking after our best interest and they're simply trying to run society, to have a moral society, to have a, a utilitarian society, a functioning society, a civil society, and, uh, and those type of good things can only be achieved if we defer power to a handful of people who hold the exclusive monopoly on force, on enforcing certain codes of conduct, that this can only be achieved by a small handful of people who will hold exclusive power over a certain geographical area, which we can call a country, or in more pejorative terms, a tax farm. But we can see that this is not the case. We can see this in the Middle East, that this is not the case. We can see in the Middle East that people, that these rulers are psychotic. <laughs> they're power hungry. They're deranged. They're evil. But there definitely is a problem when we just characterize other countries like that, particularly in the Middle East. And we are failing to see the violence in our own back door. We can't. Uh, we tend to think that uh, no, that can't happen in our country. But it is happening in our country, not to a great extent that uh, that you find in the Middle East. But if you do really check into these things and to what the government is doing, and if you just step, if you put aside your prejudices and fear and uh, jingoistic uh, patriotism and just clear your eyes, just look at the empirical facts. Just look at the facts. It's like that old Dragnet TV show from the 1960s. Just the facts, ma'am. I'm probably dating myself, but uh, hey, <laughs> not that I was a young adult in the. Uh, in the 1960s, uh, I was just a little taut, a kid. But that's the whole thing. Um, yes, I am in my 40s, and um, this message is primarily going out to the young anarchists, the young volunteerists. Uh, you are in an age that's in transition. I, no doubt, if this video is seen in, uh, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years, whatever whatever uh, this will be an age in which can be looked back on in history as aha they got it they woke up and uh, we can see this change we can see the permeations in this day and age in North America and certainly in the Middle East um, now nevertheless you're you're going to come across a quite a few people I know that you've been, I'm speaking to those people who have been turned on to these ideas, to volunteerism, to freedom, 
to anarchism and uh, you will come across people who are of not like-minded and you will come across very hostile people people who are not open to arguments to evidence to proof to uh, to these type of ideas quite the opposite but the important thing is, is not to let that dampen your spirit. Don't dampen your spirit. I know that there's probably, you feel a rush to, to share these ideas. There are those, uh, you do have that, most definitely. You want to, you, you feel like you, uh, uh, the shackles have been lifted from your soul and your mind. You might have been a person who's been previously steeped in statism. You've might gone, you might have gone through the libertarian camp and the rah, rah, Ron Paul and, uh, and uh, trying to get uh, libertarian uh, thinkers into into office, and then you might have gone through that whole camp, and then you, you know, finally probably have just concluded that it's all nonsense and landed on uh, uh, to anarchism. And you will find very hostile people, and you will also find people that will be very curious as to what you have to offer them, what you have to say, what you're all about, where, where, what, you have, what, what these ideas are about. Uh, there might be some uh, minor irritations and there might be some uh, slowness to, to accepting what you have to say. You might get a lot of arguments. You might uh, get some hostility and heat on the subjects, but then you might very well get provoked thought and get people to, to uh, listen to what you actually have to say. And then there's other cases where there's people that you just have to let slip through the cracks just let them go <laughs> let them go let them live their life let them uh, remain in their imprisoned state of, uh, of mental self-enslavement to this system let them go but the key thing here that the key thing though is is knowing when to fold them and knowing when to hold them to use the old uh, Kenny Rogers song once again I'm probably dating myself but there is a there is a there is a uh, something to be said for people who are just a complete waste of time and the people that you may very well say that you decide that uh, you love and care about and you want to share these ideas and um, of liberty and it's uh, it's crucial to know when to uh, when to pres when uh, to uh, how and when to present these type of ideas to people, and at a certain point to know when enough is enough. If it's just not working and you're just all you're doing is banging your head up against the wall and it dampens your spirit and crushes you, and they you just walk away with a lot of having received a lot of uh, ad hominem uh, ad hominem ta attacks. Blah, blah. I don't know if I said that right, or um, and uh, jeers and sarcasm. And uh, there's other points in time when you know that you're starting to reach somebody and they're starting to listen to you. So in my next video, that is precisely the, the topic that I want to talk about, is uh, presenting these, uh, these type of ideas and knowing when to walk away and, uh, and uh, knowing when that uh, walking away is not the best thing to do, but to proceed cautiously forward with these ideas when it comes to family and friends. And that's what I would like to pick up in the next video. Thank you for listening to me. Now, just consider this a introduction video to this uh, to this whole thing, and uh, pop goes the culture.